today we are going to start section three. So we are skipping section two and hopping right into section three. Um, section three, we are going to solve equations using quadratic techniques. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm sort of going to spell out the tools that we're going to need in order to solve these equations using quadratic techniques. Because now, we are going to be solving things that are not just squares. We're going to be solving things that might be to the fourth power, that might be, they might have rational exponents, meaning fractions, they might have square roots, they might be x to the sixth powers. You never know. And so we are going to figure out how we can solve these using what we already know. Okay? So, the first thing that we know is way back in chapter three, I believe, we talked about solving systems of equations. Okay? And when we did this, there was a technique that we used called substitution. Okay? You need to re-familiarize yourself with this concept because we are going to be using substitution in order to solve these equations with quadratic techniques. So just to recap on what substitution actually is, if you were given two different equations, y equals 3x minus 7 and x plus 2y equals 14, we're then going to substitute what y equals into the other equation. Okay, so when y equals 3x minus 7, that means that those two are the same thing so that we can take the place of this y and put what y equals in for it. So if y equals 3x minus 7, we can then take what y equals and instead of writing y in the other equation, we can write the 3x plus 7. So here we're going to have x plus to y, okay, this is still y because it equals the same thing, equals 14. And that's what substitution is. And then you would solve from there. Okay, so the idea of substitution is replacing one value with an equivalent value so that you can then solve. Okay? That's substitution. We should know that just reaffirming that we do. <laughs> okay? The other thing that we're going to need to know is if we're going to be solving these equations using quadratic techniques, we should probably know what quadratic techniques are. This is what we spent the entire last chapter talking about. Okay, so we talked about three different types of quadratic techniques. We have factoring, which under factoring we have our product sum factoring, we have our AC factoring, we have grouping, we have, oh, what are some other ones? Mm difference of two squares, difference of two cubes, okay, all these different types of factoring techniques we're going to be using to solve equations. We also have completing a square. That was one with the blank. So we add something to the same side. That's where our C equaled our B divided by two squared. Okay, and then we also have the quadratic formula, which is negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC. Take it all over two a. Yeah. Okay? So, so far our tools that we have, substitution, our quadratic techniques, we're also going to need to know the power of a power property. Now, we already know this from Algebra 1 as well as, I believe, Chapter 1 this year. Um, but just a reminder, when you have something to the power to the power, you can simplify that by just multiplying the exponents together. The base stays the same. Okay, but you can multiply the exponents. That's a little trick that we have. Okay, so if we have something like 2 to the 4th to the 6th, we can take 2 times, or 2 to the 4th times 6, or 2 to the 24th power. Okay? And last but not least, if we're going to solve using quadratic techniques, we need to know our goal. Our goal is going to be to get it in this form. AX squared plus BX plus C. There might be some instances where your b equals zero, so you're just not even going to have that middle term, and you just have your x squared, ax squared plus c, um, or sometimes you might not have the c term, okay? But our goal is to get it into this x squared form and that x, okay? So I want you to notice, this x has an exponent of one, right? So this exponent has to be half of that one. That's our goal. Okay, so we're going to remember that when we go into these examples. Okay, but our goal is to get it to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now today what we're going to do, because we're going to be spending three days on 7-3, today what we're going to do is just set up these problems. We're not going to solve today. What we're going to do is we're going to practice putting things into quadratic form. 
Sometimes we might not be able to, but when we can, we want to learn how to do that. So that's what we're going to do today. All right. Here we go. Example number one. We have x to the fourth plus 13x squared plus 36. Okay, if our goal is to get this to be an x squared, we want to look at the relationship between x to the fourth and x squared. Okay? If I have x squared is what I want my goal to be, how do I get from x squared to x fourth? I'm going to take that and square it. That's using my power to a power property. Okay, so if I can see that if I take an x squared and square it, I get x to the fourth, and I also see that this term, the second term, x squared, that this 2 is half of that 4, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this variable be my substitution. So I'm going to say, alright, I'm going to let u equal x squared. Okay, if you can put something in quadratic form, chances are whatever exponent degree you have here is going to be your substitution. Okay? Because this squared is x to the fourth. And that's what we want. That's how we know that we can put it in quadratic form. So if I let u equal x squared, and I know that x to the fourth is x squared squared, that means x squared equals u, so I'm going to substitute it with an equal value and say x to the fourth equals u squared. You see that? x to the fourth equals x squared squared, right? That's our power of power property. If x squared equals u, then I'm going to substitute u in, and now I have u squared. Okay, then I have plus 13, x squared is u, so I'm going to have 13u plus 36. Okay, and this would be written in quadratic form. Okay, because now we know how to solve something like this. We would know how to solve a squared quadratic thing. We could either use quadratic formula, factoring, and so forth and so on. But this is what we're comfortable with because we know how to solve this from last chapter. So we turn something that we did not know how to solve into something that we do know how to solve. And that's our goal for today. Okay, if we look at... If we look at this problem, here we don't have a b, so here all we need to figure out is if I want to put this in quadratic form, so I want to see a squared here, how can I get that to be squared? Well, what squared equals x to the 6? So we're looking at what can I square to equal x to the 6? That answer, going backwards from our power of a power, is x cubed because 3 times 2 is 6. So if I take x cubed to square it, that means that I'm going to let my u equal that x cubed. Because I know that if I take x cubed and square it, I'm going to get x to the 6. So then our problem becomes 16u squared minus 625. Okay? and then we could solve from there. Over here, I have x to the fourth plus 2x cubed minus 1. Okay, we've seen x to the fourth before. If I have x to the fourth and I want to get to x to the fourth, what would I let my u be? How can I get an x to the fourth? Oops, that's four. Okay, what can I square to get x to the fourth? That would be x squared. Okay, so that means I'm going to let my u equal x squared. If that happens, then I know right here that I'm going to have u squared plus 2, and now I have x cubed. That is going to be not very pretty, is it? Is that my u? See, up here in this problem, our u was that variable and degree. Here that's not the case because we have our u substitution is x squared and here we have an x cubed. That's going to give me an x with a rational exponent. It's going to give me a fraction. Do we know how to solve things with a square and a fraction? No. 
So we cannot write this one in polynomial, um, in quadratic form. Okay, so we cannot write that in quadratic form. All right? An easy way to tell that is if you look at the degrees of your first term and your second term, this one right here should be half of that one. Okay, 3 is not half of 4. Up here, 2 was half of 4, so it worked. Okay, but 3 is not half of 4, so we will not be able to write this one in quadratic technique. Okay? Here with this example, 3 is half of 6, so we're going to be able to put this one in quadratic form. So now we have to figure out what can we square to get x, x to the 6. So if we're looking to get x to the 6, what can we square to get x to the 6? Going backwards using our power to power property, we'll find that that is x cubed. Okay, so that means that our u is going to be x cubed. If that's the case, here I'm going to have 2u squared plus u plus 9. And that is our quadratic form. Okay, and last but not least over here, we have x to the fourth minus 29x squared minus 100. So 2 is half of 4, so we are going to be able to put this in quadratic form. So now I want to figure out what can I square to get x to the fourth. That, from our previous examples, we know is x squared. So that means that u is going to be x squared. Okay? Um, if u is x squared, then I know that I'm going to have u squared minus 29u minus 100. Okay? And that is quadratic technique. Just to make sure that you are watching these videos all the way through, I'm going to offer you some extra credit right now, so listen up. If you comment on this video with a quadratic, no, with a polynomial that cannot be written in quadratic form, I will give you extra credit. If you do not have an account and want to write it on a piece of paper and bring it to class, that is fine, but this will be due Tuesday in class, because I'm assigning the video Monday night. Okay, so extra credit, write a polynomial that cannot be written in quadratic technique. Alright, see you next time.